Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I am your host, Doug Geinzer, and we're here in the studio today with Dr. Bonatti, who is bringing the Bonatti Spine Institute to Las Vegas. Welcome to the studio, Dr. Bonatti. Thank you. So before we get started, just tell us a high level, tell us a little bit about the Bonatti Spine Institute and some of the background of the procedures that you do. Well, the, the Institute was born in 1981. And from that time, uh, we start to develop procedures that they are associated practically with uh, advances on the spine. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, we have uh, procedures that were associated with open back surgeries. But the results of the open back surgery, they are not good. And uh, if you heard sometime in, in your life a physician saying to a patient, uh, wait with this pain as long as you can because the back surgery may not work. And a lot of patients follow that indication for years. Well, that situation changed since we developed procedures using a tube to target the areas of the body that they have a problem. Mm -hmm. And those target procedures are the ones that we develop. So is unique, is very much untapped yet. Uh, we can operate the patient and have the results almost immediately in the operating room. How we know that the patient is better is because the techniques of anesthesia that we, always, we also develop. This anesthesia is a type of a sedation that we do with a conscious activity of the patient's mind. So we call them, we call them conscious sedation anesthesia. So the patient is with no pain during the procedure, but at the same time is able to communicate with the surgeon. That's amazing. When that happens, the surgeon can now touch a nerve and make the patient recognize if that is the exclusive nerve that is giving the symptoms. Wow. So when you follow that, then you can look in that nerve where this nerve is now with some pathology. For example, you have the nerve going in a canal and then suddenly you have an osteophyte. An osteophyte is a type of spur and that one is piercing the nerve. Those are the symptoms. So we can identify that. Or sometimes the, the, the canal becomes old and degenerated and the nerve instead to go straight down now is curved and twisted and that needs to be corrected. But when you do that, the patient is immediately recognizing the pain and is feeling the relief of the pain meanwhile you are cleaning those areas. So it's an, it's an incredible procedure, but at the same time, the results are absolutely immediately in the operating room and with the knowledge of the patient because it's awake. And it sounds like you've mastered this procedure. You've done over 50,000 cases. That's a lot. Well, it's a life work. Uh, and, and we are practically very unique uh, on on this procedure because we had a patent on this procedure. We had also a advances in developing constantly new instrumentations and new new directions from this procedure that allows us to tackle other type of problems on the patients that before were unable to be treated. For example, in the beginning of the procedure, we we're unable to treat uh, extra discal problems. Today, we go in the foramen. We go in the main foramen of the spine. We go in the neuroforamen of the spine. At the same time, people who has problems like spinal stenosis, in the past, we were not able to do anything with it. And the procedure that is being done for spinal stenosis with open surgery barely works. The patients had a lot of complications with those procedures because 
the amount of exposure that is necessary to try to correct this, and they miss a lot of important areas. Remember that when I am operating, if I am an open uh, back surgeon, and if I look directly down to the wound, even if I'm look, using some type of a magnification glasses or so, my, my, my vision is only 20-20. But when you use a scope, you can increase your visualization of that field 40 times. Well, And if you, you look 40 times bigger, a piece of, uh, imagine that you have a hair, and that hair is 40 times the size of the, of the real hair, you're looking at, like a rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the possibilities to injure anything there is minimal. Yep. And if you know well your anatomy, and you know you know well your your uh, techniques, uh, and the patient being awake is impossible to hurt this patient, because if you touch a nerve a little bit, the patient is going to say you're hurting me. Sure. And then and you coach that patient to tell you that you tell them you cannot have any pain. So you're talking to the patient the entire way through this procedure. You should. You should be talking entirely. Some patients sometimes are very scared of the surgery, and then you may you may put them down a little bit. Meanwhile, you are doing the initial part of the surgery, and then you bring them back again. Sure. And then at that time, they're already looking at the television themselves, and their mind disassociate themselves with what they are looking on the on the on the on the on the screen, and they cooperate. So this. It has a little bit of a psychology, a little bit of manipulation with the patient, but at the same time, if you are kind, if you explain them, and if if the if the patient is very scared, you give them the opportunity to go to sleep for a while till you you use the the main instrument, and then bring him back when you really need to 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 look for the nerve and and and, and have the cooperation of the patient. But ninety percent of the patients they don't do that. Mm-hmm. They usually they usually want to see what's going on. Sure, that's amazing. So you've had patients fly in from pretty much every state in the union and multiple countries from around the world to receive this patient or to receive this procedure. How do you attract those patients? That's it, it's uh, it's amazing that they fly from everywhere. Is it just because of the outcomes that you deliver? And tell us a little bit about those. We have an, we have we have a different type to evaluate the patient's result. Usually when you go to a journal of, of uh, reports in medicine that they are the Journal of Orthopedics or Journal of Neurosurgery, when you look at those ones and they talk about the results, they are talking about the results of the procedure. Mm-hmm. So uh, they say patient uh, uh, result of fusion and they give you a number. They say 80% or whatever. Well, they're talking about the the type of surgical management of that procedure. They are not talking about Mr. Jones who said, you help me, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So we change that. We don't care about the talk to the the to the to the to the results of the surgical procedure. Now, the surgical procedure needs to be perfect or the results are not going to be good. Of course. But I need to talk to the patient, and the patient needs to tell me, you know something, I was in a lot of pain, and you helped me. That is the way that we evaluate our results. So our results are patient satisfaction and not surgical uh, Results and what does your patient satisfaction number look like? I know it's something that you boast and it's something you should be proud of. Well, this is amazing. The result is 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 an indication of really a good surgical procedure, a unique surgical procedure. We change the face of a spine surgery with this procedure. Um, 
our our results are ninety eight point seven five percent of wow. these patients. But when you talk about that number, it's almost 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 ninety nine percent of the patients are are cured. That type of patient satisfaction is unheard of. Oh, it's, it's brutal. It's, it's something that you need to be very, very happy to have that, mm-hmm. but is is unheard. Is in medicine you cannot offer those results, but these results are really possible because you are dealing with a mechanical problem, mm-hmm. and the problem with the spine. It seems to be that we lost some track on the evaluation of the spine, and we talk about me- mechanics of the spine, mechanics of the disc, uh, um, degeneration of the disc, uh, uh, collapse of the, the, the interdiscal space. It has no value. All these things is absolutely of no value to correct the problem with the patient. Mm-hmm. The the value that you have with that is that you can have a diagnosis, an accurate diagnosis, and say, okay, if this this bone, the vertebra above and the vertebra below, they collapse, and now we have a ber- very degenerative disc in between, and this disc is bulging uh, and pressing the nerve immediately on the area on the area below there, uh, and it's touching the nerve. And those are the symptoms, but you need to understand also that when the roof of the house came down on the floor, and then the structures that they are in that area, they are being collapsed, they are being changed, they are being squeezed. Sure. So you need to prepare yourself to open that 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 the roof. You open that canal, and then if you open the canal and you free the nerve, the results are perfect. You bet. Now, you don't need to be worried about you collapse the vertebra. You don't need to be worried about that the disc is degenerated. You don't need to worry about, uh, so for example, it's a lot of people that they go and they say, I can remove your leg pain, but I cannot remove your back pain. Mm-hmm. And you go, yeah, that's true. That's the most difficult to remove. The back pain is the most difficult. Why? Well, if you look at the anatomy when you are operating these patients, and you touch with a small probe the nerve, the patient tells you where it hurt. So when you touch the very birth of this nerve coming out from the dural sac, if you touch that or coming out from the, the spinal cord, if you touch the very the axilla of that nerve, you touch a little bit that area, the patient say, I have back pain. Mm-hmm. So you know where the back pain is. So the only thing that you need to need to do <coughs> is you need to increase the space underneath that that axilla on the nerve, and you correct the back pain. Now that back pain can be coming from that area. It usually comes from that area, but also can be coming because the the neurological component of the disc. <coughs> And if you can go ahead and, and and look at the disc, and if the disc is bulging, and you can correct that area, then probably you are going to not only correct the central back pain, but at the same time you can correct some type of the radicular back pain. So <clears throat> you're expanding here to Las Vegas. Why Las Vegas? Well, you... You need to understand that we we have patients coming from all over the country. So when you analyze from where the majority of the patients come to the institute, you you see that around 60% of the patients come from the east side of the country. <coughs> okay? Now the west side of the country, like California, Las Vegas, or Nevada, or, or New Mexico, is more difficult to travel to, to Florida. So if we want to serve the population in this area, 
uh, the most attractive uh, um, spot will be Las Vegas. So your intent's not really to serve the Las Vegas market itself. It's to attract patients from out of market here to perform your procedures. Correct. We already have uh, a reservations <laughs> of always, um, if I recall well, it's around 150 patients oh that they gosh. already assigned to come to Las Vegas in when we opened the institute. So we are not going to really target patients in Las Vegas. Now, that thing doesn't mean that physicians in the area, for example, they want to refer a patient to us, we will be more than happy to serve them. <coughs> also, if we have a group of patients, for example, that certain certain physicians have a problem uh, with a patient, they cannot, they cannot cure them. Imagine that the patient has two or three surgeries and, and the results are, are not satisfactory to that doctor. We will be, we will be, uh, to, we will be able to serve that doctor to, to, to correct that patient. So when does the Institute here in Las Vegas, when does that open up and where is that going to be located? Well, um, we already have the, the license uh, approved for the surgeons that are going to be working here. Now we are waiting to get the license uh, for, the, for the facility. As soon as the license for the facility is, uh, is uh, approved, then, then we're ready to go. This is exciting for Las Vegas. So uh, many know that we started embarking on a journey to position Las Vegas to become the most globally recognized destination for health and wellness travel. As a matter of fact, we've got a little directory that we put out a couple of years back about talking about our story and what it looks like. And it sounds like you've been doing this in Florida for 30 years now. Yes. And so it's amazing that we're, we're grateful that you're moving out here to Las Vegas. We look forward to you bringing your expertise out here. What can we as the Las Vegas community do to best support you and your growth efforts? Well, I think uh, the, the most important thing is that we have an understanding that we are bringing a very unique, incredible, assertive program here to serve the population that needs. Now, we will bring also people from outside that they will utilize a lot of the service in, 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 the, in, the, in the city, uh, will utilize probably um, even doctors, they are necessary for us to, 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 to help us uh, to evaluate some, some, some of these patients. We will bring surgeons here, but sometimes we will need to have radiologists. Uh, we will need to have <coughs> people from from uh, physical therapy, mm -hmm. we need to we need to have uh, individuals that they are uh, surgeons that they have a problem with a patient that, that has a failed back surgery, uh, situations like that. We will create a symbiotic mechanism where they help us and we help them. Yep, and as you know, in Las Vegas, we're on a quest that we're calling Eds and Meds, the alignment of medical and education. Uh, we have two brand new med schools being opened up here in 2017. Um, Tell us your opinion with medical education. Can you see yourself aligning with them? How does that training opportunity come about? Because we're all about how do we grow our own here in Las Vegas to help thriving enterprises and organizations such as yours uh, expand. Can, what's your, how do you align with medical education? Well, I think medical education is an incredible uh, tool to promote and accept what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we want to align with the medical school here because what we would like to do is we would like to create, for example, a, a, a chair for the target Bonatti procedures. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, uh, we will donate a certain amount of income to the university to be able to train physicians. So we'll give some, some, some try to, 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 how can you call, a help to the university to select physicians that they can be trained in this, in this type of a procedure and, uh, and, and expand and, and, and serve the community also with their expertise. 
we look forward to that. So tell us a little bit. You've got several patents that you've earned along the way. You've been the first to do many different things. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, like everything in life, is an opportunity. I came from a training program in, in, in Wake Forest University with an incredible teacher who uh, is uh, practically the best arthroscopic surgeon uh, or one of the best arthroscopic surgeons on this time in, in, in the world. Mm -hmm. And Gary Palin did something that taught his students to really use the scope and how to use the scope. And he trained us on <coughs> knee surgeries. Mm -hmm. But when I left his, uh, his, his side and, and I opened my own practice, I thought the opportunity was incredible to explore other joints. And then initially I explored the shoulder, <coughs> and I'm the first one to put an arthroscope in the shoulder in the world. Wow. And then, and then from that time on, the whole thing become <coughs> more and more uh, accepted. And then suddenly now, a surgeon, uh, an orthopedic surgeon who doesn't do arthroscopy of the shoulder, uh, is in, is in a handicap. Okay, because today you don't open the sh shoulder anymore like you don't open the knee anymore. <coughs> well, the time then changed, and I thought maybe it would be a great approach to use the same type of a procedure for the, for the spine. And uh, my first idea was how, <coughs> how to get on the spine. Mm -hmm. So keep going. Tell me a little bit about the patents that you have as well. Well, the first thing that we did is one day I was driving and I saw that the um, I was thinking how to get inside of the spine without cutting six inches in length. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that happened was I put the radio on the car and that car had the antenna that we had before that was a telescoping type of an antenna. <coughs> and that antenna just went up and uh, create a situation where it triggered my mind. And that was, oh, if I can use the reverse of the antenna and use a tiny little needle to go exactly in the area and then telescope tubes, I will mm -hmm. distend the tissue, but I will go directly on the area that I need to operate. So this is the targeted approach that That's you That's a targeted approach, about. yes. And when we did that, we, we, we found that, yes, we can do that. And then I opened uh, a um, research and development with another company. At that time, that company was called Coherent, and it had a laser um, uh, that that was uh, developing. Mm -hmm. And um, I developed the, the tubes, and I patented the tubes. And then I did some studies with cadavers at the University of South Florida. And I look at, the, I look at how the tubes can be placed, took some x-rays, and, and then we develop a technique. After we develop a technique, we apply for research and development. We did six patients with the technique. And, uh, and the results were amazing. I mean, the people got better right there. So when, when we develop that, then the next is just history. We improve the techniques, we improve the, the instrumentation, and we are today in a situation that is very, very unique in the world. <coughs> so you've trained people from around the world as well, and you've gone around the world training others. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, 
um, I cannot say I trained. What I did is I did lectures, mm -hmm. and some of the surgeons came to the institute to see the procedures. The training is very difficult. It's not something that you can do it. Uh, I look one and I do one. Mm -hmm. uh, in medical school, we say help one, look one, help one, and do one. Well, this one, you cannot do that. If you try to do something like that, you will be in hot waters and you never will come out from it. So the training takes a long time. And even very much, all my surgeons are very skillful surgeons from the best medical schools in the country. And the problem that I see with them is that they is like another world. They have the knowledge, they understand the, 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 how careful they need to be around the nerves and the spinal cord and the whole thing. But when they use a scope in the tubes, they need to go to another world. Sure. And sure. They, need to, they need to be retrained. In the beginning, they are amazed. Then they think they can do it. And when I give them the instrumentation, they, they, they fail totally. And then they need to be more humble and then they go, okay, how I do this? <laughs> and when that happens, we progress and, and we obtain the results that we obtain. These people are amazing. Once they are trained, they are fantastic. Dr. Banani, we're about the, at the end of the show. I want to thank you for being on Inside Medicine. And I think rather than hearing it straight from you, why don't we take a few minutes and we're going to roll with uh, some testimonials of patients and let the patients tell the story. Oh, good. Okay. This is the first time that I am pain-free after 18 years, and it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results, no pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone, nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already, I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now, I can garden, I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I am feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. 